Oh, first of all, thank you very much to to you know have me here for uh, uh, today and yesterday's. I learned a lot. I got a lot of inspirations, and I got a lot of uh, information, inspiration, so that we can apply to establish or beef up our identity down the road. That's the point. And today, the point I want to make is we are still uh, on in the process of moving forward and to identify ourselves. The, th the fact is we've been making, like I uh, explained yesterday, our history goes back to 1973, so over 40, 45, 43 years. We've been making whiskey for long, focus on high quality stuff, being the clean on history. That's our uh, philosophies. Oh, good. <laughs> Good. Anyway, those are the stuff uh, I prepared. But <laughs> you, maybe that's too small. But let me talk and finish it. This is just uh, this is uh, the things I'm talking is just uh, asking uh, the questions to you all and also ask ourselves how we can identify ourselves and how make things different from others. Um, yesterday we talked about our uniqueness and the styles, what we are making. First of all, under the philosophy of clean history, we are making lots of uh, different style of whiskeys so that we can uh, deliver and appeal to Japanese consumer. We never thought about going abroad up until recently. Feel like uh, these days, we were discovered from uh, people f abroad. We start to get a lot of attention, but up until recently, uh, uh, when you speak of Japanese whiskey, Santori, Nika, and the Ichiro's malt, King, you're making, not making the uh, whiskey, you're making beer, isn't it? That's the uh, question, the impression. And they've been the, uh, under the branch of King Brewery. That's huge. Malt, uh, tens of billions dollar business. But uh, when it comes to whiskey divisions, of course we're making a little bit over two million liters uh, alcohol a year for malt, both malt and uh, grains. But you know, today talking about big and small to us, size is not the issues. How we can identify and how we make that our whiskeys. Thinking about being the uh, uh, distiller and the blenders for, uh, I mean, making uh, whiskey at the foot of Mount Fuji. What's the Japanese whiskey should be? What is ought to be Kirin Fuji Gotemba dist distiller's whiskey? Thinking about uh, regionality and, uh, you know, and also the, these days, uh, uh, many people talking about Japanese whiskey, still asking ourselves what the Japanese whiskey is. Uh, some people talking about delicate flavors, but many people, countries, making a lot of delicate whiskeys and cordies. Why we make our whiskey? Asking uh, ourselves a lot of stuff. Then, up until uh, recently, you know, our, we have our own style of whiskey, and they tried to make still uh, appeal to the consumer. But look, uh, looking forward, what we can do, what's our strength, and what we can identify ourselves, what we can proud of, what things we can do to make to the next level. Those are the uh, uh, thought process ourselves. This moment, oh, that's disappeared. Uh, our focus, point of focus, is uh, grain whiskeys. Yesterday I showed uh, we uh, three diff uh, in large categories. We uh, make three different uh, style of grain whiskeys. 
uh, in different uh, configura configura uh, configuration of uh, steels, light, medium, and heavy stuff. But those are the area uh, we can uh, do more to make our whiskey different from others. Some people asking their uh, yeast, and some people uh, talking about their wood. And the yeast, you can find it anywhere. And the wood source, I will now this moment, American white oak, that's the main focus. But there are a lot more other woods. Those are the area for the grain whiskey we can do. And speaking of the yeast, from my, my experience, for example, uh, with the four roses. Making a bourbon, normally using one or two yeast at most, but the four roses using five different uh, kinds of yeast, combination with different recipes. I'm not promoting about four roses today, but in, in uh, significance of yeast characters. The different yeast make a lot of uh, differences in the uh, whiskey. At the new pot, you don't see that much of differences, but uh, depending upon how you age it, five years, 10 years, change a lot. Incredible aroma and flavor developed. So uh, work on the yeast, which we are doing. Uh, so in the future, we can some, uh, introduce those different expressions by yeast too. Uh, but that's not the uh, you know, uh, regionality or not the specific to the foot of Mount F at the foot of Mount Fuji. But what we can do is what, how and what we can make uh, different uh, uh, whiskies. So our focus is going back again, there are grain whiskies, uh, mostly for blends. We're making different varieties again for making the blends. But also, we can make, uh, uh, we, we would have more opportunity to introduce a sing, uh, single grains in different uh, expressions. Those are the area uh, we are uh, now uh, focused on. The, let's see. <clears throat> That's uh, area, and uh, speaking of uh, our theme of um, uh, grain whiskey, I mean that theme for grain whiskey, we call rich grain. Uh, speaking of uh, grain whiskey for blends, people think about more filler, like I mentioned yesterday, but there's so much about opportunity to promote or make things different from others by working on the grain whiskey. Uh, some of you probably uh, tasted, or how, you know, how many people tried uh, our single grain yesterday? Oh, thank you, Mo more than I thought. But anyway, there should be some uh, try. Uh, that's uh, just one of a type of a grain whiskey. Uh, that's uh, batch kettle stuff. A uh, lot more stuff, but uh, that's the one of the example by itself. It's uh, Kevin mentioned, you know, Garvan 28 years like uh, Crown Brulees. Ours, our own style, more like uh, how do you say? In, uh, there's no such English, but uh, uh, not the sugar cane, but it reminds you of uh, Crown Brulee or Marron Grasse in France. I mean, like a rich. Uh, nutty and sweety character and reminds you of also uh, raw cane sugars, really deep and sweetness. Those are the characters we want to enhance in the grain so that contribute to the, the flavor of profile of our blends. That's the area, area we're working on. And the, the speaking of, uh, going back, uh, the theme, uh, rich grain, that's, uh, the, what that means is we try to promote richness in grain whiskey people uh, never thought of, but also enhance richness in the grain whiskey uh, in order to 
get another, you know, range of uh, whiskies. Speaking of uh, Japanese whiskey industry, there is no, uh, how do you say, market for bulk. We cannot, we, we, we not, there's not opportunity to buy that bulk or exchange each other. That's not that accustomed to do it. That's the reason why we're making so many style of whiskey by ourselves, for ourselves, to express. That makes uh, us really uh, think a lot of us aspect how we can do that. So we have a lot of stuff to do. Of course, uh, uh, try to use local ingredient, uh, like a grains, that's uh, one area. But other area we work on, uh, being the Japan, the Futo, Mount Fuji, cool regions, there's no such grain uh, grow locally. Of course, uh, looking in the whole of island of Japan, there are a lot of uh, local uh, grains. But thinking about what's the local, what's the regional narratives, rather we focus in more uh, meticulous about process and how we can work, make things different, uh, fo focus on the grains. And then again, uh, later on, probably you will hear, and also um, um, speaking of uh, uh, grain whiskey production briefly, that uh, it's uh, whiskey magazine, a uh, uh, couple of uh, issues uh, before, that was talking about our grain whiskeys. It's we promoting three umami brothers. That's just a, uh, concept or notion of our grains. Uh, our grain act like as a soup stock. Umami, you know, that a, a, as a Japanese uh, style of uh, dishes, we use a lot of uh, kelp, dried um, tunas, dried, um, uh, what's that? Uh, um, uh, mushroom, mushroom, shiitake mushrooms, those are stuff. It's, it's not, our grain doesn't taste like those uh, soups, you know, but uh, act like that, that uh, once we uh, blend together, uh, like uh, we see some uh, additional or synergy effect, one plus one does not equal to two, just add more, express some other uh, flavors. So those are the stuff uh, we have and luxury having different style of grains. We, by working on improving that area, there uh, a lot more uh, expression of flavor profile we can uh, make. That's area we're working on. So that's uh, our focus of uh, uh, grains. The last thing is, Mentioned today a uh, couple of times uh, mentioned about diversity. Uh, I, in, in order to I identify or establish identity, diversity is, sounds like um, contradictory. But speaking of uh, our situation, there's no exchange for the bug. Uh, first of all, we, we are. Um, um, our main product, the blends, uh, some, of course, single grain, single uh, malt, but in order to make that, that uh, excellent or their product to appeal to the customer, we, w we need to diverse our whiskey components. So first, working on the uh, grains to diverse the uh, flavor, uh, working on the different uh, ty uh, 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 processes. Next, probably, uh, probably down the road, and also, as a matter of fact, we are working on the remote, how we can enhance the characters. Clean on the history. Uh, under the policy of clean on the history, we are making a little bit uh, too light, stripping too much under the sake of uh, clean. But we can make more richer, uh, still being the clean. 
that's the area we, we, uh, we are working on. There are a lot more stuff uh, uh, we can do. That's the area. Uh, this moment, we cannot express or explain to you who we are that much, but I just uh, wanted to uh, encourage the uh, questions and make us think what we can do, um, which direction we should go. So uh, that's pretty much end of the, uh, my preparation of the talk, but uh, let's discuss, and I love to have more questions and inspiration. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry for this. Uh, you know, I, sh I wish I could have shown that, uh, which I prepared, but that's uh, my apology. Well, Joseph, thank you. I, I, I know how tricky it is. Well, A, I don't know how tricky it is not to speak in a foreign language at all, but, but A, doing it in, in English, and then B, not having your... Uh, uh, <laughs> presentation up there on screen. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal lecture well, you gave you. us. So thank you so much. Thank that. you. Curse technology. Uh, questions for Jota? We have a bit of time. <laughs> anybody, anybody other than Patrick want to ask a question? Any, any particular point? Or Johnny? You know, uh, Patrick, you were, you were first. You know. Yeah, uh, I, I will invite, you know, please come over to visit us uh, down the road. <laughs> uh, the thing is, uh, Bachkero, that's uh, developed by the Seagram. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, the Bachkero uh, uh, system uh, we are the only one in Japan, and also probably the Gimli, uh, owned by uh, used to be there, you know, there under the uh, yeah there Seagrams. That's the other. Oh, could be one more. But that how that work is, uh, I don't know if you remember the yesterday slide. Just uh, it's just a tank, and uh, connect with a rectifier. But uh, first, uh, let me, just uh, too much maybe technical, so I can explain later, but first I use a beer column, then after we get that, uh, uh, like a little over 60% of alcohol put into the duck kettle, hold it, then start to but just add one batch, and then start to heat it up. Then uh, connect with a rectifier, that's part of our uh, column, other uh, column distillation, but that uh, make by batch, but that a conjunction with kettle. It's like a Holstein, I don't know how to say it, uh, technically or theologically, that's the uh, mechanism, but they're different, they, uh, yeah, just connecting by pipes, but that's how we distill. So you strip it first, basically, mm -hmm. and then you put it in the... Uh, like a tank, a pot, pot. Exactly, yes. And it comes off, what strength? It comes off the same, almost the same strength as your... Yeah, your, uh, but, but 90, the flavors 90, are totally different. Yeah, 94%. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, but I mean, texturally, and, and this is the interesting thing about it, you know, uh, from a flavor point of view, aromatic point of view, flavor point of view, and a textural point of view, it's significantly different to, to the lighter style. So Why is well, you should get one. <laughs> I can see that in your eye, you know. <laughs> well, as far as I know, in the some rum industry, uh, I don't remember exact uh, producers, but I heard uh, from my friend that somebody walked, that used to own by the Seagram again, but they're using that stuff. But I don't know why, but uh, people try to uh, do their own, so I don't know. Oh. Why, what, is, what makes it different? Why is it different than from the normal 
I mean, just a matter of what kind of uh, stuff you concentrate or strip. So that's, uh, you know, distillation theory stuff, so how you rectify and how to, you know, uh, recycle or how do you, so it, that might be too technical. Yeah. I'd love to discuss with you, uh, whoever, yeah, any question, but uh, that's, uh, I remember that when they uh, visited us and they tasted the, uh, the spirit, he said, first, wow, what the rich flavor it is. That's what, so anyway, and thinking of 94, close to 95%, you cannot uh, believe that there are such a de density, I mean, the richness, must feel. And that, that umami character, which is it something we'll pick up on Johnny. Yeah. Uh, in the future, if uh, we can, I mean, there, uh, that's room. I mean, already we've been asked by some company, especially they're looking for rich grains, like a batch kettles they want to use for their blend. This moment, We'd rather uh, build up uh, stock so that we can export or uh, deliver to the customers they want. This moment, there's not such a, uh, well, not the excess, but s such a room for us. But in the future, yes, that could be, yes. That would be the uh, great opportunity if we can exchange with, you know, Santo Nica or Ichiro's. Yeah, that's, uh, we can make a great stuff. Doesn't have to be compete to each other. We call, you know, many people think, uh, we call the, uh, not the marketing guys, says, uh, you know, uh, competitors. We call each other fellow distillers. So that's it. It, it's, it's wonderful to see that the, the, the way in which Japanese distillers are, are, are pulling together, actually. You know, I remember I mean, years ago, that nobody really talked to each other at all. And now there's a much more of a collegiate atmosphere and everybody is, is sharing information. The marketing departments still hate each other, but, but you know, from, a, from a production point of view, and this is really important in the evolution of Japanese whiskey, people are really sharing information and helping each other out. And it's great to see. Uh, I think we'll, we'll probably call a halt to this little bit because uh, I'm aware that, that there is going to be a bus going to an airport at mm, some mm. point that don't really want to overrun. We'll have a very quick uh, comfort break, come back and we'll have the panel discussion. Okay, but please put your hands together for Jota Tanaka. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.